Assalamualaikum, we are from group 5 of Modern Machining, section 1. Today we will present the application of modern machining processes in injection mold industry. Our main focus of the study is push-pull lead bottle cap. So let's proceed to chapter 1, Introduction. Introduction to bottle cap. A bottle cap is also known as a bottle top which act as a closure for the bottle opening or the bottle tip. There are two types of bottle cap which is made from plastic and also made from metal. A plastic bottle cap is usually made of polyethylene or pro polypropylene. A plastic bottle cap is usually used on plastic bottle. Meanwhile, a metal cap is used on glass bottle. A glass bottle cap is usually made from aluminium or steel. Below shows the type of bottle cap that can be found on the market. The first one is the crown cook, the second one is a flip top, the third one a screw cap, and the final one is the push pull cap. Our main focus in the study is a push pull cap bottle cap. The mechanism of push pull cap, as the name suggests, the push pull cap is the mechanism of pushing and pulling for the water flow. Pulling upward will allow the water to flow through the bottle opening. Meanwhile, pushing downward will block or prevent any water from flowing out of the bottle opening or bottle closure. Application of push-pull cap, there are two main applications, which is the first one is sport industries. Athlete prefers the push-pull cap due to the easiness and the efficiency on how the mechanism works. In sport, time is very essential. Therefore, the mechanism of opening the bottle cap can be used without requiring both hands to open the cap. Instead, they can open it by using their mouth. Therefore, athletes very prefer this push-pull cap due to its efficiency. The second one is push-pull cap widely used in children's daycare due to children less control or strength in hand to handle a bottle. As we know, when the hand has less strength, therefore there might be a water leakage from the bottle. Therefore, this push-pull cap will provide more secure packaging from any water leakage out of the bottle. For the next part, I will pass to Hassanuddin. Next, I will talk about the existing product in the market. So on the right side is actually uh, one of the most famous design that is available in the market. So the push pull lead bottle cap usually serve uh, different and multiple purposes such as uh, a dish soap uh, bottle, uh, sports drink bottles and ch children daycare. So uh, we narrow down our scope into the sports drink bottle. So uh, most of uh, people uh, use the water bottle uh, they will squeeze uh, the water bottle to let uh, the drinks out. So, uh, and most of the design uh, of the push pull lid uh, bottle cap has a huge hole for the drinks to come out. So, the improvisation for this project is we create a small hole which is uh, uh, on the main body, uh, which is the lower bottom part of the bottle cap to let the drinks uh, travel in high pressure surfaces. Next, uh, this is the initial sketch of our push pull lead design. So uh, the initial uh, sketch uh, consists of two main components, which are the main body uh, and the top cap. So the dimension uh, is actually based on the project instruction, which is the width of the uh, Bottle cap should be maximum 50 millimeters. The height, uh, maximum, uh, the maximum height is actually for uh, 50 millimeters, and also the thickness of the water bottle should be maximum 5 millimeters. Okay, next we will move on to the chapter two, which is material selection. Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Zulhilmi Berosli and I will present the material selection for the push-pull lid. Bottles are typically made from four different kinds of plastic. First is polyethylene terephthalate, 
which is PET is used to make plastic bottles that store potable water and other beverage since it is both sturdy and light. Second is high density polyethylene which is HDPE. It's used to make hard plastic bottles such as detergent bottles. Third is polypropylene PP is used to produce pill bottles and uh, lastly is polycarbonate PC is used to produce refillable water bottles and other reusable containers. High density polyethylene and polypropylene were selected for the production of push pull lid, which HDPE for the top section and PP for the bottom section. High density polyethylene and polypropylene were selected over PC which is polycarbonate because of their cheaper cost. Second is HDPE has high of a temperature resistance compared to PET and PP is cost effective due to the ability to reheat and recycle excess material unlike PET which is not very cost effective in recycling and third is HDPE well known for its durability and strength and PP have a low density which enables the production of lighter products. Hi, my name is Mohamed Salba and I will present the chapter 3, the fundamental and principle of EDM dye sinking. So the first one is the fundamental of EDM dye sinking. EDM, or known as the electrical discharge machining, is a machining method that involves removing the material from a part by series of repetitive electrical spark between electrode and workpiece. The electricity will move through electrode in a square wave, striking the least resistant of the workpiece area. Therefore, when large potential difference exists, the dielectric breakdown, therefore creating a spark. This spark will result in the workpiece to melt and vaporize. This is due to the local temperature that can increase to 10,000 Celsius. Next, the electrode is created based on the desired shape, therefore the machine will erode the workpiece inverse form using the shape of electrode. Electrodes is very important in EDM dye sinking because the electrode may experience tool wear and impact the machining process. The tool wear will be, can be determined by the parameters such as procedure, shape, material and tool electrode. In EDM dye sinking, electrical current flowing between the electrode and the workpiece will generate heat in form of spark. Therefore, the electrical current flowing between the electrode and workpiece will result in high generation of heat. The dielectric fluid will act as electrical insulator until sufficient voltage is supplied and converted into electric conductor. Once the spark is removed, the dielectric will deionize and revert into electrical insulator. The debris created from the machining is, can be removed by the flushing of dielectric fluid. Next is the advantages and disadvantages of EDM dye sinking. The advantages of EDM dye sinking is metal with high value of hardness and toughness can be machined no distortion on the part to be machined due to no contact machining. No contact machining, therefore no mechanical stress is present during the machining. Next is the good surface finish with low tolerance and it also can machine complicated shape. However, this, the, the disadvantages of EDM dye sinking is such as sharp corner can be hard to obtain due to tool wear like slow material removal rate, that means we'll have longer machining time, excessive tool wear due to melting from high temperature from the spark, and the machine only able to machine conductive material only, and the final one is excessive power consumption. That's all from me, thank you.
Assalamualaikum My name is Muhammad Syari bin Azhar With matrix number AD170124 Okay, I will continue presenting the chapter 3 Which starts at uh, how the EDM, wise, EDM dice thinking working principle EDM dice thinking consists of 4 parts Which the first part is control panel Where all the data and parameters insert at there The second part is dice thinking Consists of the uh, dielectric fluid third part is workpiece holder uh, it, this machine uses a magnetic chart and the last part is electrode holder next the working principle of the DM die sinking the sinking starts when uh, two metal parts which are electrode and workpiece are completely submerged in a continuously flowing the electric fluid it is connected to a high frequency DC power supply which supplies about 20 to 120 volt and 5 kilohertz. The electrode is connected either to the cathode or anode depending on the needs for the product and vice versa for the workpiece. A small gap is maintained between the electrode and the workpiece, approximately between 0.5 micrometer to 50 micrometer. This, this gap is called a spark gap. And third, as the electrode becomes closer to the workpiece, the strength of the electric field in the spark gap area is higher than the strength of the dielectric fluid and eventually the current from the electrode starts to react with the workpiece in the form of a spark. The spark will lead to the melting and vaporizing of material from the workpiece. This is called a spark erosion. Next, chips or the material that has been removed from the material from the workpiece is then flushed away by the continuous flow dielectric fluid. It will then be filtered to separate the chips and the dielectric so that the spark gap area will have a clean dielectric fluid without altering its original properties. These are the summary for parameters that have been used in this working, working, working process. The first one is polarity. Uh, this process uses a normal polarity because uh, it gives a higher material rate removal than rather than surface finish. Next, the advantage uh, of normal polarity is tool wear rate is low. If the polarity is reversed, the the electrode is connected to the anode. Next, electrode material uh, since this process required a high accuracy for the final product in order to assemble thus the copper tungsten material is used for the electrode another advantage of copper tungsten is it has a low tool wear rate and is, it will ensure the electrode can be used many times after that workpiece material workpiece material used is P20 pre-hardened steel because it is widely used in plastic injection it has high wear resistance and also it has high corrosion resistance and the last parameters is dielectric fluid since the workpiece material is made up from the tool steel or to be specific is pre-hardened steel uh, the dielectric fluid used is hydrocarbon uh, and also the material re removal is higher compared to distilled water. Hello, my name is Wan Muhammad Haikal bin Wan Hosanizam and I will continue to elaborate on chapter 4 which is the design of push and pull lid cap. So let's proceed. So for this project, it will consist of two main parts which is the top part and the body part and the table illustrated on the right side of the slide is the list of 14 drawings involved in the design making for the push-pull lid cap uh, which is uh, the drawing parts, the assembly, the mold design and the electrode design so the first one is the body parts for the push-pull lid which is made of a PP material and the second one is the top cap part which is made out of the HDPE material and next is the assembly drawing for both top cap and the body part in assembly file okay next uh, you can see on the screen uh, is the assembly 
also the assembly for the top cap and the body part but in the view of cross section so you can clearly see uh, how clearly see how the mechanism of the push pull lead work from the cross section view so this is the hole where the water taken out from the bottle and this is a stopper design which will be described later in the end of this chapter okay next okay this is the the mold designed for the body part of the push pull lead where it consisted of three uh three parts which is uh the mold and the core for to create the hole on the body parts also for the top cap involving three parts and also included a core to create the hole in the middle of the top cap okay next this is the design for the electrode used to uh, use for EDM machine to create the body parts of the mold the mold for the body part sorry and next is the electrode use of copper tungsten material for the top cap part used in EDM die sinking machine okay so I will describe one by one of the design specification used for the design of the push pull lead cap so the top cap finish the top cap shape and the surface finish for the top cap is cylindrical design and smooth surface finish is to ensure the comfortability while drinking out from the bottle and appropriate to the ergonomic of the human mouth okay and next, for the body part of the push-pull lead, is also use the cylindrical shape, sharing the same reason to ease the manufacturing process using the injection molding. And next, the design of the body also use simpler build design compared to the existing product in market where the mechanism of pushing and pulling did not require additional component. Okay, for the cap stopper design, uh, the purpose of these edges is to control the motion of the cap mechanism while securing the placement of the top cap to not separate it from the main body part. The main body part is this the blue color, the as we can see previously, and the top cap is the white color, white color plastic material. Okay, next is the top cap, the top cap aging design on the top cap is used is uh, a simple edging to assist user in pulling up the cap and the edging design will acting as a grip like pattern on conventional bottle cap okay. so next is the flow hole design on the cap body as you can see uh, previously on the cross-section view drawing uh, it is a new design uh, and it is designed to be smaller but we maintain the working principle of taking out the water from inside the plastic water bottle and the semicircle hole design uh, you can see from the top view uh, is to ensure zero spill when the lid is in closed position so that's all for chapter 4 thank you very much the next part is the experimental procedure the first one is to switch on the machine uh, there is two button uh, the first one is source and the second one is power you make sure these two buttons is switched on next the workpiece with dimension of 25 mm height 30 mm width and 30 mm length for both uh, mode is placed on the permanent magnetic chart use allen key to switch on the magnetic third one on the screen select the apparent face to set to set the coordinate system of this process and manually move the center of the electrode closer to the either side of the workpiece. Next, enter value 1 mm in the ST to return option and press the on button on the coordinate menu. The probe will start to move and touch the workpiece when the ENT button is pressed. 6. After that, switch the mode to off mode to touch the opposite surface of the workpiece and press enter for automatically touch the surface 
Next, to determine the X axis midpoint value of the workpiece is by selecting the move menu and set the ST menu to off. Select the measured axis and press the halfway menu then press ENT. Finally, select the menu coordinate set and type G54 on the coordinate system. Select the X axis and make sure the value of X is equal to 0. Then press the ENT button. Repeat steps 3 and 4 in order to get the midpoint value for the Y axis. Next, I will talk about the chapter 6 which is the important element uh, for this project according to SODIC AQL parameters. So the first one is actually the polarity where there are two types of polarity which is the reverse polarity and normal polarity. So for, rever for reverse polarity, electrode will act as a positive charge. Meanwhile, the workpiece will act as a negative charge. So for normal polarity, electrode will act as a negative charge. Meanwhile, the workpiece will act as a positive charge. So for this project, the reverse polarity is selected in order to create a good surface finish for the workpiece. Next, the electric discharge time, which is the on time. So the combination of the on time will be used so initially, uh, a long on time will be used in order to reduce the electrode waste. Uh, meanwhile, to finish up the project uh, with short on time in order to get a fine surface finish. And finally, the electric discharge uh, stop time, which is off time. So uh, for this project, a long off time will be used, which is it will lead uh, to a slow machining speed. However, it will increase the stability in machining. So that's all from our group. Thank you.